Who were the most powerful men in the Bible? As we delve into the pages of the Bible, we encounter numerous individuals who left a lasting impression. However, these five men stood out above the rest due to their unique strengths, divine experiences, and the vital roles they played in accomplishing God's objectives. Number 1. Melchizedek Our story begins with Melchizedek, a mysterious person who appears in the book of Genesis. In Genesis, chapter 14 verses 18 to 20, we read about his meeting with Abraham. Then Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abraham, saying, May God Most High, who created heaven and earth, bless Abram. And praise be to God Most High, who handed your enemies over to you. Then Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of everything he had. Melchizedek, as the king of Salem, blessed Abraham and shared bread and wine with him. This encounter was important because it foreshadowed the future institution of the Lord's Supper, a sacred meal observed by Christians. Melchizedek held the roles of both king and priest of God Most High, which was a unique combination. Melchizedek's priesthood existed before the establishment of the Levitical priesthood under the Mosaic Law. Hebrews, chapter 7 verses 1 to 3 provides additional insight into Melchizedek, stating, this Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He met Abraham as he was returning from defeating the kings and blessed him. Then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness, and then also, king of Salem, means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. The author of Hebrews emphasizes the exceptional nature of Melchizedek's priesthood. His name, Melchizedek, means King of Righteousness, and he is also referred to as the King of Salem, meaning King of Peace. This enigmatic figure has no recorded lineage, no recorded beginning or end, and bears resemblance to the Son of God, who would later come as Jesus Christ. Thus, Melchizedek serves as a foreshadowing of Christ's eternal priesthood. In Hebrews, chapter 7 verses 11 to 17, the author further explains the significance of Melchizedek's priesthood. If perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood, and indeed the law given to the people established that priesthood, why was there still need for another priest to come, one in the order of Melchizedek, not in the order of Aaron? For when the priesthood is changed, the law must be changed as well. He of whom these things are said belong to a different tribe, and no one from that tribe has ever served at the altar. It is clear that our Lord descended from Judah, and in regard to that tribe, Moses said nothing about priests. And what we have said is even clearer if another priest like Melchizedek appears, one who has become a priest not on the basis of a regulation as to his ancestry but on the basis of the power of an indestructible life. For it is declared, you are a priest forever, in the order of Melchizedek. The author of Hebrews compares the Levitical priesthood with the priesthood of Melchizedek. The Levitical priesthood, established through the Mosaic Law, was temporary and required regular sacrifices for the forgiveness of sins. However, Melchizedek's priesthood, foreshadowing the eternal priesthood of Christ, was based on an indestructible life and not on ancestry or regulations. Melchizedek's meeting with Abraham and his unique role as both king and priest of God Most High foreshadowed the coming of Jesus Christ, who would also be a king and a priest. Melchizedek's priesthood serves as a powerful symbol of Christ's eternal priesthood, offering a superior sacrifice and providing everlasting salvation. Number 2. Moses. Let's continue our journey through time and meet Moses, an incredibly important figure in Jewish history. Moses was born during a dangerous time, but God chose him to lead the Hebrew people out of slavery in Egypt. In Exodus, chapter 3 verse 10, we see God calling Moses, saying, Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. God spoke to Moses through a burning bush, giving him the task to confront Pharaoh and guide the Israelites to the promised land. At first, Moses felt unsure and inadequate. But God reassured him and revealed his divine name as, I am, who I am. Exodus, chapter 3 verse 14. With God's power and guidance, Moses confronted Pharaoh and brought a series of plagues to show God's authority and demand the release of the Israelites. 
Eventually, Pharaoh relented, and the exodus from Egypt began. One of the most incredible miracles associated with Moses was the parting of the Red Sea. In Exodus, chapter 14 verses 15 to 22, we witnessed this amazing event. God instructed Moses to raise his staff and stretch out his hand over the sea, dividing the water so that the Israelites could cross on dry ground. God hardened the hearts of the Egyptians, leading them to pursue the Israelites. But God gained glory by parting the sea, allowing the Israelites to pass through safely. The angel of God and a pillar of cloud protected the Israelites, keeping the Egyptians at bay. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and with a strong east wind, God drove the waters back, creating a dry path. The Israelites walked through the parted sea with walls of water on their right and left. This incredible event showcased God's faithfulness, protection, and deliverance. Later, on Mount Sinai, Moses received the Ten Commandments directly from God. Exodus, chapter 20 verses 1 to 17 describes this pivotal moment, where God gave Moses the foundational commandments, a moral and ethical framework that would guide the Israelites in their relationship with God and with one another. Moses played a crucial role in leading the Israelites through the wilderness for 40 years, despite facing numerous challenges. Even when the people rebelled and doubted, Moses remained faithful and interceded on their behalf before God. He received divine guidance, including instructions for constructing the tabernacle, a portable sanctuary where God's presence would dwell among his people. Moses's life came to an end before the Israelites entered the Promised Land. Deuteronomy, chapter 34 verses 5 to 7 tells us that Moses died in Moab, and God himself buried him. Moses was 120 years old when he passed away, yet his eyes were still strong, and he had not lost his strength. Moses, the servant of the Lord, left a remarkable legacy as a prophet, lawgiver, and mediator between God and the people of Israel. His life was filled with extraordinary moments of faith, leadership, and a close relationship with God. Moses's impact on Jewish history remains unmatched, and his story continues to inspire people to this day. Number 3. David. Let's now meet David, a powerful man who started as a shepherd and became the greatest king of Israel. In 1 Samuel, chapter 16 verses 12 to 13, we see God choosing David. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was healthy and handsome. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him, this is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, and from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord was with David. Despite facing challenges like battles against giants and King Saul's jealousy, David remained loyal to God. He composed beautiful songs, showed incredible bravery, and made Jerusalem the capital of Israel. One of the most famous stories about David is his encounter with the giant Goliath. In 1 Samuel, chapter 17 verses 45 to 47, we witness David's faith as he faces this powerful enemy. David said, You come against me with weapons, but I come against you in the name of the Lord. Today the Lord will give you into my hands, and everyone will know that there is a God in Israel. It is not by weapons that the Lord saves. The battle is the Lord's, and he will give you all into our hands. With unwavering trust in God, David defeated Goliath with a single stone, showing that his victory came from God's power. This event displayed David's courage and his deep reliance on the Lord. David's rule as king had both triumphs and challenges. He united the twelve tribes of Israel, made Jerusalem the center of politics and worship, and brought the Ark of the Covenant to the city. However, David also faced personal and moral struggles. David's reign ended after 40 years. In 1 Kings, chapter 2 verses 10 to 11, we learn about his passing. Then David rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. He reigned over Israel for 40 years, seven years in Hebron and 33 in Jerusalem. David, the shepherd king, had a lasting impact on Israel's history and its spiritual heritage. Despite his imperfections, his devotion to God, his poetic expressions of faith, and his establishment of Jerusalem as the holy city made him a central figure in biblical history. Number 4. Samson. Let's now meet Samson, a famous figure known for his incredible strength. In Judges, chapter 16 verses 28 to 30, we witness Samson's final act of bravery. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, God, please give me strength one more time. 
In Judges, chapter 16 verses 28 to 30, we witness Samson's final act of bravery. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, God, please give me strength one more time. Let me take revenge on the Philistines for taking away my sight. Samson reached out and held onto the two central pillars supporting the temple. He pushed with all his might and the temple collapsed, killing the rulers and all the people inside. In his death, he killed more Philistines than he did during his lifetime. Samson, recognized for his long hair and extraordinary physical power, was chosen by God to deliver Israel from the Philistines' oppression. Despite his weaknesses and mistakes, Samson's story teaches us about the consequences of disobedience and God's unlimited mercy. Samson's narrative begins in Judges chapter 13, where an angel appears to his parents, explaining Samson's birth and instructing them to raise him as a Nazarite, someone consecrated to God from birth. As a Nazarite, Samson had specific rules to follow, such as avoiding wine, unclean food, and cutting his hair. In Judges, chapter 14 to 16, we witness Samson's encounters with the Philistines and his demonstrations of strength. One of the well-known incidents is Samson's encounter with a lion on his way to Timnah. Judges, chapter 14 verses 5 to 6 describes Samson's encounter and his supernatural strength. As Samson and his parents were approaching the vineyards of Timnah, a young lion suddenly came roaring toward him. He spirit of the Lord came upon Samson, empowering him to tear the lion apart with his bare hands, just as one would tear apart a young goat. However, Samson kept this feat a secret from his parents. Samson's strength was a result of the spirit of the Lord working through him. Nevertheless, despite his remarkable physical abilities, Samson struggled with moral weaknesses, particularly his attraction to Philistine women. His relationship with Delilah, a Philistine woman, became his downfall. Samson's life serves as a cautionary tale, highlighting the consequences of giving in to temptation and straying from God's commandments. However, even in his failures, Samson's story also reveals God's mercy and his willingness to use imperfect individuals for his purposes. Number 5. Abraham. Now let's meet Abraham, the patriarch who became the father of many nations. In Genesis, chapter 12 verses 1 to 3, we hear God's call to Abraham. God said to Abram, Leave your country, your relatives, and your father's house, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. Through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Abraham showed unwavering faith by leaving his homeland to follow God's promise of descendants in a land of their own. He trusted God even in difficult situations, like when he was asked to sacrifice his beloved son, Isaac. Abraham's story begins in Genesis, chapter 12, where God calls him to leave his country, relatives, and father's house and go to a land that God will show him. Abraham obeyed God's call and embarked on a journey of faith. Throughout his life, Abraham faced challenges and witnessed God's faithfulness. In Genesis chapter 15, God promised Abraham that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky, despite his old age and his wife Sarah's inability to have children. Abraham believed God's promise, and his faith was considered righteousness. One of the most significant tests of Abraham's faith came in Genesis chapter 22, when God commanded him to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. Although this command seemed to contradict God's promise of descendants through Isaac, Abraham obediently prepared to carry out the sacrifice. Just as Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac, God intervened and provided a ram as a substitute. This event showed Abraham's unwavering trust in God's plan and his willingness to surrender even the most precious things in obedience to God. In Hebrews, chapter 11 verses 17 to 19, we find a reflection on Abraham's faith during the testing of Isaac. Abraham, when he was tested, offered his son Isaac as a sacrifice. Abraham, who had received the promises, was about to offer his one and only son, even though God had said to him, through Isaac, your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead, and so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. Abraham's willingness to offer Isaac in obedience foreshadowed the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ, God's own son, who would be offered for the sins of humanity. 
Abraham's faith and obedience were further demonstrated when he interceded on behalf of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. In Genesis chapter 18, Abraham pleaded with God to spare the righteous people in those cities, even negotiating with God down to ten righteous individuals. Although the cities were ultimately destroyed, this event revealed Abraham's compassion and his willingness to stand up for others. Abraham's faithfulness and obedience laid the foundation for God's covenant with his chosen people. Through his descendants, Abraham became the father of many nations, and all families on earth have been blessed through him. Ultimately through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As we conclude our journey through these five powerful men, Melchizedek, Moses, David, Samson, and Abraham, each of them had unique qualities that set them apart. They showed immense faith, faced daunting challenges, and left enduring legacies that continue to inspire us today. As we reflect on their lives, may we be encouraged to trust in God, follow His calling, and make a difference in our own time. Thank you for joining us on this captivating journey through the lives of these remarkable men in the Bible. If you found this information helpful, please like and share the content with others. And remember, each one of us has the potential to make a positive impact on the world when we surrender ourselves to God's plan. Until next time, may God abundantly bless you.